Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And here we have an interesting problem. We want to take the square root of 3 over 10. And the question here is, do you know what to do? And also, I don't have it in my little title here, but I want to suggest, do you know what to do without the aid of a calculator? Well, if you're taking any sort of math class that involves algebra, you absolutely need to know what to do. So if you know how to simplify this situation, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and I'm going to explain this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the square root of 3 over 10, and again, what we're really talking about here is not plugging, into, uh, plugging this stuff into your calculator. So put your calculator away. What would be the answer? Do we need to do something here? We absolutely do. And the actual answer is the following. Okay, so we have the square root of 30 over 10. So why did we uh, kind of change this fraction? Of course, our original fraction was the square root of 3 over 10 into this fraction. Why was, why was this important? Why was this even necessary? Well, I'm going to explain all that in just one moment. But if you got this answer correct, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a nice little happy face and A plus A 100 percent and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you understand how to evaluate square roots and fractions and the like. Okay, so really we're talking about here some really important concepts that, again, those of you out there studying algebra must know. Let's go ahead and get into it right now. And the first thing we need to discuss is a property of square roots. So here we have the square root of an entire fraction, 3 over 10. All right, so we have the square root symbol kind of covering this entire fraction. But we have an awesome little property when it comes to square roots and radicals. This little symbol right here is also known as a radical in mathematics. And uh, this particular property, what you're allowed to do is when you have one big square root over a fraction, we can actually take the square root of the numerator and divide it by the square root of the denominator, just like this. So this is what we want to be thinking about. We've got this one big square root. Let's go ahead and write this entire uh, fraction, or the square root of this entire fraction, as the square root of its numerator uh, divided by the square root of its denominator. Okay, this is really the key to doing this problem. All right, so that's the first step, is understanding that the square root of an entire fraction can be written like this. All right, now, why is this important? Well, here, when I look at this number, I have the square root of 3, and I'm dividing it by the square root of 10. And the square root of 10 is something called an irrational number in mathematics, okay? This is a very, very important concept. And my question to you is, what is an irrational number, okay? What is that? Matter of fact, if you know what that is, put that into the comment section as well. But basically, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, take off this IR part, right? So if we don't have an irrational number, irrational number, we have a rational number. So let's just kind of real, just uh, for the sake of this video, let's do a fast, fast review. So here is zero on our number line. Then we have one, two, numbers like this, negative one, negative two. These are what? These are integers, right? So then, of course, we have our... Uh, counting numbers, our natural numbers, our whole numbers, and then we have our integers. Then we have these numbers called rational numbers, which are fractions or numbers that can be expressed as fractions using integers. So let's say a fraction like two-thirds would be located right here. Okay, I could take two and I could take three. So this would be a rational number. Again, any uh, number that you can express as a fraction of integers is what we call a rational number. So what's an irrational number? Well, it's a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction, all right? That's one way to define it. Another way to define it is it is a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So in other words, uh, let's uh, uh, take pi, for example, okay? 
that number, most of you might be saying, well, it's not equal to 3.14. No, that's a, a, a real rough approximation for pi. Pi is an irrational number. So you have 3.14. This value for pi continues on and on to infinity, and the digits don't repeat, and they don't terminate. They just go on and on and on in random kind of sense out forever to infinity. So it would be entirely impossible to write out all the digits of pi. Same thing with the square root of 10. Now, if you go into your calculator and take the square root of 10, you're going to get a decimal and it's gonna go on and on and on and on and on. It's not gonna repeat, it's not going to terminate. So you would need a calculator with an infinitely wide screen to get all the values of the square root of 10, okay? so. This doesn't make sense, right? We're trying to divide something by a number that goes on infinitely, okay? We don't even know the value of it. So conceptually speaking, in mathematics, we don't want to be dividing uh, a value by an irrational number, right? So for example, if I have a pizza and I say, hey, let's split this up uh, four different ways. Well, we can kind of get that, right? There you go, there's four uh, different ways we can split up the pizza but can we split the pizza up this many ways, the square root of 10? Well, I don't really know when this value stops. So we start having issues in mathematics when we have an irrational number in the denominator. So that's kind of a long-winded explanation, but it's very important that you understand that because when you're working with fractions and square roots, you need to be on the lookout for irrational numbers in uh, the denominator. Okay, we're not concerned about them in the numerator, it's in the denominator. So we're gonna to have to get rid of any irrational numbers in the denominator, and uh, this is not that difficult. Okay, so let's get back to our problem. So we know that the square root of three over 10, we can write that as the square root of three over the square root of 10. So we're just going to basically take our uh, fraction here, our square root of three times the square root of 10, and we're gonna multiply it by one, okay? So if I said, uh, if we take any value and multiply it by one, what is going to be the answer? Well, of course, anything times one is just what that uh, uh, whatever you started with, right? This is what we call an identity in mathematics. So we can take anything we want, multiply by one. We don't change the result, okay? But the one that we're going to use is a very special one, a very unique one. And here is the one that we're going to use, okay? So we're going to take this square root of three uh, and we're going to square root of 3 over 10, or square root of 3 divided by the square root of 10, excuse me. And here is the 1 that we are going to use. This is uh, the 1. Now, here we have the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 10. Again, anything divided by itself is what? Well, it is 1. Okay, so you're like, well, this is crazy. Why, are, why do all this work? What's the whole point of it? Well, when we take this square root right here, the square root of 10, and we just divide it by itself, square root of 10 times square root of 10, that is one. But when we multiply, okay, uh, these square roots, okay, again, we're multiplying by one, so we're gonna multiply across this way. This is going to get rid of this square root in the denominator. Let me just go ahead and show you how this works uh, because it's much easier. But I really kind of want to make sure you understand that you're not breaking the problem. So some of you out there, you know, of course, in your math classes, your algebra classes are taught, oh, here's the square root of 10, multiply whatever the square root down here is, multiply both the numerator and denominator by it. That's perfectly fine. But just understand uh, what's kind of going on big picture wise. I think that's a better way to conceptualize and really comprehend the material. Okay, so let's start with the easy stuff. The square root of 10 times the square root of 10. Here we have two separate square roots. We can write this under one big square root right here. So the square root of 10 times the square root of 10 is the same thing as the square root of 10 times 10. And the square root of three times the square root of 10 is the same thing as one big square root. Uh, uh, that, of course, that's gonna be three times 10. Okay, so let me slow down here because I'm kind of stumbling in my words and make sure you understand what's going on, right? We're just simply multiplying fractions here. All right, so let's go ahead and now simplify this. So the square root of three times 10, of course, is going to be the square root of 30. And the square root of 10 times 10 is the square root of 100. And here is the big payoff, right? The square root of 100 is 10. I can get rid of this uh, square root of 10. That was an irrational number. 
and I kind of tricked my problem into a rational number. The square root of 100 is a, uh, is a rational number because I could take the square root of 100, that's uh, a 10, and now I have the lovely this lovely whole number there. So now I have the square root of 30 over 10, which is perfectly fine. Remember, the issue is having an irrational number in the denominator. Okay, we can't have that uh, situation. We're not concerned about irrational numbers in the numerator. All right, so hopefully this all makes sense to you. This is extremely important in uh, mathematics. I can tell you right now, if you uh, left your answer, if you looked at this answer like, eh, there's nothing wrong with it, uh, I'm like, ah, you know, that's it's good enough, and you turn this into your teacher, you would probably get multiple points off, and then you would be like, you know, like this. You'd be like, I should have listened to that guy on YouTube. But listen, I'm here to, one, teach you, two, encourage you, and three, tell you what you need to know to be successful in mathematics. So if you need more help with square roots or radicals, a couple suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But if you want my best full instruction, I'll probably uh, direct you towards my full Algebra 1 course. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.